Hello everybody, it's Jennifer and today I'm going to talk to you guys about something that I don't think a lot of women talk about and I don't know why. I mean, um, you know, our society tends to be either overly blatant about sex or completely hushed about it. Um, but these things are important to talk about and I think that a lot of women are wondering about this, especially if they are first-time mothers, they're pregnant the first time, and they're trying to figure out how to reintroduce you know, their sex life back into their life after a new dynamic change like having a baby. Um, I was an only child. <laughs> I didn't have sisters to talk to about this kind of thing. Uh, I've always been kind of antisocial as well, so uh, even I was the first anyway of my friends to have any babies, so I really couldn't talk to any of them about it. So I guess I'm, I'm sharing with you what I would have loved to have heard um, from either an older sister or, or a friend who had gone through having babies and, and felt comfortable enough to talk to me about reintroducing sex into their life. I hope this helps you in trying to figure out, um, you know, how it's going to be after you have a baby and, and you know, some of the things that might come in the way of, of finding that sexuality in your life again. I'll give you some of my advice about maybe how to, um, you know, make the best of these situations. To allow yourself the space and the time to reclaim your sexuality to find that again or maybe kind of reinvent it after you have a baby because you know everything changes and it all changes for the better but it's it's neat to have this new norm and this this new outlook moving forward as opposed to trying to maybe stronghold onto what was there before. So first of all, after you have a baby, there is a time frame that you're supposed to give your body to heal before you engage in actual sex. And um, you know, that doesn't include snuggling and, and various other creative sexual activity that you can have. So you know, keep that in mind that there's plenty of ways of physically connecting to your partner without actually having sexual intercourse. However, you need to listen to your doctor because it is important to give your body that time to heal. Um, and you know, there are kind of open wounds up in there that are susceptible to infection and you don't want to cause any sort of disruption, especially when you're trying to care for your newborn and, uh, and, and create this new norm. That can vary. It depends on your healthcare provider from two to sometimes six weeks depending on the kind of birth that you had, whether it was vaginal or C-section. So listen to your healthcare provider on that, and please do give your body space to heal so that you don't introduce any sort of bacteria infection into your, your body. The other thing is that you're going to be bleeding. And, and some of you know that. I've been surprised working as a doula for 10 plus years that a lot of women don't know that. After you have a baby, you are going to bleed for a while, and that depends on a lot of different factors. Some women stop bleeding within two weeks. Some women keep bleeding for three months. So there are a lot of different factors. How many babies you've had, what kind of a birth you had. Um, there are a lot of different factors that come into play, but you will be bleeding for an extended period of time, longer than you would normally for a period. And, um, and, you know, of course, that can get in the way of, of your sex life as well. So, you know, those, those kind of go hand in hand. The time frame that your healthcare provider gives you to let your body heal and the amount of time that you're bleeding, sometimes healthcare providers will say, once you stop bleeding, then it might be okay to resume having sex. So sometimes they do correlate them together. Tears or episiotomies. If you had a tear, um, if you had a c-section, you know, if you were actually cut, you had an episiotomy, then that is also going to delay your, your being able to have sexual intercourse with your partner. Um, 
I remember with my first son, uh, I've had five babies. I only tore one time bad enough that I needed stitches. And that was with my first. And um, I remember the thought of having sex was absolutely terrifying. Just <laughs> beyond anything that I could comprehend for the first three months. And I can tell you that even after that, um, it was very painful and tender. So, you know, be sure that you communicate well with your partner, that you give your body the space. If you maybe start and, and it's painful, then have that good communication with your partner where you say, look, I am so sorry, but this is not going to work today. I need to give my body space to heal more. And um, just be very open. You, you, this is your body and you need to take care of it and, and give it that loving attention that it gave you and your baby to heal properly. So I hope you have that communication with your partner where you can voice this kind of thing. The next one is hormones. Now, <laughs> this is really interesting because I have seen women on both sides and I've actually been on both sides as well where sometimes the hormones postpartum make you really interested in sex. So if you think about it, you have this huge cocktail of different hormones going on through pregnancy, through labor and birth, and lactation. You have a lot going on and your body kind of reacts differently to different hormones, of course, and everybody kind of reacts differently to those hormones. So it's really interesting to see how some women through some babies and maybe even the same woman with other babies can be super horny through, you know, maybe the first two babies, you know, within a month postpartum. And, uh, and then, you know, maybe subsequent babies, they don't even want to think about sex for six months. Their hormones just aren't there to, you know, get them to even that place of wanting to have sex. So hormones are another big factor. It's different for everyone. It's different through each baby. I can attest to that. And, um, and you know, it's something that, again, with good communication with your partner, you can come to a place where you can say, look, I'm just, I'm just not there yet mentally, <laughs> physically. I just don't feel like it. And, uh, you know, that's something that you and your partner need to work through together. But I just want to let you know that you're not broken after you have a baby just because you don't feel like having sex. It, it could just be your hormones being off. But that leads into a whole different subject, which is your, your self-image, your body image. We tend to look at ourselves differently after we have a baby. Our bodies have changed, you know? Um, I know that immediately after you have a baby and, you know, coming from personal experience, having gone through it five times, I look in the mirror and I still look five months pregnant. Now, of course, it, you start slimming down, and especially if you do self-care rituals like Bancoon binding and things like that. But as you are going through this kind of metamorphosis into reclaiming your body, it is an interesting time period where some women just don't feel like sharing their bodies with their significant other. It might be uncomfortable. They might be self-conscious, and that's totally and completely normal. So you might not recognize your body for a while. You just don't feel like being sexual because you have a low image of your body. And it's unfortunate that we women go through that, but it happens, you know? So, so give yourself the space to reclaim your body. And not just reclaim your body, but get to know your body in a new light. Your body has done something so incredible. It has given life. And while you might now have stretch marks or a saggy belly, I implore you to look at that in a different light in that this is, you know, badges of honor. This is something that, that your body has done for you and this child, and they should be looked at in a positive way and not that your body no longer looks like it did pre-pregnancy. Every child that I had, all five of them, changed my body in some way. 
I was able to get my flat belly back, but um, but it just I can just feel and see that my body has just changed with each child. I've gotten to a place now where I appreciate my body so much more than the body I had before I had my first baby. And I wish that for you guys as well, because it is a beautiful place to be. And uh, I can sh assure you that your significant other uh, will feel the same way. You gave your child life and both of you will come together and, and love your body for not only what it's done, but what it has become. So the last element is time. Actually finding the time to have sex with your significant other when you have a baby. And all of these things kind of align. You know, once you get the okay from your healthcare provider, you stop bleeding, your hormones are kind of back in line, you have healed from any tears, you're, you're regaining your um, self-esteem with your body, and then you will start finding the time. Your baby will start sleeping more at this point. Finding that time to connect with your significant other through a very dramatic life change, like adding a whole other person to your family. Your connection with your significant other is the backbone of your family. So finding that time, and again, it doesn't have to be sex. It can be any kind of you know, physical and emotional connection. But when the time is right to have sex, because that is what we're talking about in this video, you will find the time, you'll make the time. But that is another element that you will have to cross, another hurdle that you'll have to cross um, in, in regaining your sexuality postpartum. You know, my best suggestion is listen to your body. Give yourself the space to heal physically and emotionally from, you know, this, this massive life change. And you don't want to push yourself into something that you are not ready for, whether it be physically or emotionally. Open up that communication with your significant other so that you can say, you know, I'm not bleeding anymore, but <laughs> my hormones are really off and I just, I don't feel like it that's okay, you know, that's okay to say. And I hope you have that communication open so that you can voice how you feel and what you need. And, um, and I, I can promise you that whether it takes you a month or six months or a year to regain your sexuality postpartum, it will come back. Things will come back into line. You will start creating a new norm that, that is, is optimal for you physically and emotionally. I have been through it a lot, not only with my own five babies, but with all of my doula clients that I've worked with. So um, I do have a lot of experience in this. I would love to help you through it. If you're having issues or if you're having questions, please do feel free to leave them down in the comments below if I can be of any additional assistance. Until next time, be well.